special guest, Paul, who's going to join me and ask some questions about uh, Chennai Super Kings as well as other bits of the IPL. And he's going to give us a little bit of a drum roll as well. So I'm excited about that. So let's roll bumper and get right into the show. Well, we're going to get through this bit very quickly because I love it when the guests get on and ask the questions. So our first talking point today, RCB's batting up front. Yesterday against Mumbai, they were just too slow early on. They've got to take more risks in the power play uh, and they leave it too much for the back end to really catch up at the the, uh, final stages of the innings. They knew that there was going to be heavy dew there at Mumbai. They knew it was going to be difficult for the bowlers and they knew that they needed a pass score of around 215. And when you're less than 50 going into or coming out of the power play on a decent batting wicket, you know that you are behind the run rate. So for me, 215 probably wasn't par the way that Mumbai batted last night. It was probably around about 220, 225. Would have been a little more difficult in the run chase. Just that little extra pressure with the run rate. All of a sudden, batsmen have got to take little extra risks when they don't want to. So RCB have got to look at that. They're too too heavy with the batting to, um, uh, at the top of the order. All right, let's go into the next one. What have I got for it? Boomer Factor. There's no doubt that the Mumbai Indians really uh, set their bowling attack up around Jasper Boomer. He's just awesome. And they utilise him out the perfect spots. When they're under pressure, when they need the wicket, he comes on. And it's good that he bowls that 19th over because the batsmen feel as though they've got to go after him at that stage as well. And that's where he can pick up those extra wickets and just uh, let the inexperienced bowlers who are going to bowl the final over just take the pressure off them a little bit more. So that 19th over is crucial. And uh, we're going to talk about Glenn Maxwell a a little bit later just quickly, but I just love the way that Hardik Pandya had Courtsy bowl four uh, four balls to Maxwell, ended up to be six balls because he bowled two wides just attacking that short ball. But he saw that Maxwell wasn't moving his feet as well as he should have and thought, right, I'm going to try and save two overs for Boomer out the back end. I'm going to take a risk here and go to the leg spinner, who Maxwell is generally pretty good at, and Gopel got him uh, within two balls of that over. And that was a big wicket and a big turning point of the game. So the utilisation of Boomer, knowing that Glenn Maxwell is going to be worried about him uh, if he had to face him, Arctic Pandya, great thought process there. Okay, we'll go out to the next uh, next talking point, the fifth over of Mumbai's batting in, uh, innings. Strategic mis, uh, mis stuff up here by RCB. I was going to use another word, but uh, it was a complete stuff up. You know that you need to take wickets. Topley went for 13, 14, he went for three boundaries in the previous over, but the second boundary, it was an edge between the keeper and first slip. He was lucky not to get the wicket of Kishan. You need to take early wickets in the power play. De Plessis said this after the game as well when he did an interview. So you have your trump card, the bowl that's swinging the ball, the one that's most likely going to take your wickets, Reese Topley. And Reese Topley against Rohit Sharma was probably one of the contests that you wanted up early. He uh, He's probably the one that was most likely to get Rohit Sharma up, uh, out with the ball going across. That's Rohit Sharma's uh, little weakness. Siri Kumar also has a little bit of – well, has a little bit of a weakness against the left arm pace as well. And you've got to utilise those strengths to the top order of the opposition team. So strategic strategic stuff up there by RCB. All right, we're just going to go to Glenn Maxwell quickly because Glenn Maxwell is out of sorts. The way that he moved his feet against Corti yesterday, the way that he was stuck on the crease against Go Pell, he's got a bit of a mental fade right now. And when I talk about a mental fade, he's thinking about the negative rather than the positive. 
he's got to go back to what uh, he's got to go back and find those moments when he's been most successful, what he was doing before the game, uh, how he was thinking before he went out to bat, and think about that positive process that he, he had uh, a couple of months ago when he was dominating for Australia. He is out of sorts, thinking negatively. He's got to turn that around very quickly. I'm worried about Glenn Maxwell uh, for the rest of the tournament, and I was surprised that they went to with Will Jakes uh, instead of Green. They should have gone with Will Jakes instead of Glenn Maxwell in this particular game because Maxwell had that big problem against Boomer. Boomer has got him out a number of times, and Mumbai Indians would have been able to utilise Boomer at any stage if Maxwell, Maxwell looked as though he was going to take the game apart. So for me, RCB, the decision-making uh, in this particular game is all wrong. Um, the next one, Hardik Pandya. He looks as though he settled. He looked a lot calmer as captain last night, the way that he was uh, uh, talking to his troops. Uh, he had a smile on his face. And he looked as though he'd got over all the rubbing that the crowd had been giving him, the booing and, and the negative commentary. And the way that he batted, he came out with positive intent. He looks like he settled in the blue. He looks like he's back as the major Mumbai Indian impact player. And I am a little concerned for the teams that are above Mumbai Indians right now because these guys are on a roll. Hardik Pandya, his leadership, his calmness, watch out and the way he batted last night and he uh, bowled an over as well again. That all-round ability, that's going to turn things around for Mumbai. They are going to be absolute dynamite and they'll be in the uh, final four at the back end of the tournament today. Um, the next one, who's the better bat batter out of Sky? Uh, Kartik, as well as Kishan. Well, I really enjoyed Kartik's innings yesterday. Just the way that he was able to manipulate it behind point, most of the boundaries there, he was using the pace. Every now and then, he played that pull shot, but he played a powerful cover drive off Boomer. That was probably the shot of the uh, night for RCB. So that was a wonderful innings under pressure where they really needed to take the game away. Kishan gets them off to a good start. Beautiful shots all around the ground, but he did give a chance. If the first slip was in a better position, Kishan would have been out early, so I can't give it to him. But Sky is my favourite batsman in this IPL. I'm glad that he's back from injury. But just the way he was able to uh, negate Topley through the offside behind point, just playing backward drives to those fuller deliveries, and then Topley going wide outside off stump again, he just gets on the uh, knee and decides to take him over leg side behind square. Unbelievable shot. So Sky is my uh, had my favourite innings uh, yesterday. And for me, Mumbai Indians having him back out number three gives them more options uh, to better balance their team and it strengthens them up and they look the bee's knees. They look as though they're going to turn things around and uh, move into the finals very quickly. Okay, we've got one more minute to go and just want to talk about uh, Lucknow Super Giants and Delhi Capitals. For me, I think the Delhi Capitals don't have a, a stronger bat batting lineup as Lucknow. And I think Lucknow, even though they've got young Yardov, who's out for a couple of games with injury, I think uh, Mohsen Khan or Ashid Khan should come in, two left armers, and I think they are going to uh, provide the needs that Lucknow need in their bowling attack. Either one, which one they go for, I think uh, a left armer up front against uh, uh, Delhi Capitals can create early wicket-taking opportunities and the spin depth that Lucknow Super Giants have, I think it's going to be too much for uh, the Delhi Capitals tonight. And Ashid Khan, I spent a bit of time with him while I was over with the Mumbai Indians before the season started last year uh, and I was uh, coaching in a team that he was part of. He can also handle the bat as well. Very good fielder. I want to see him play more IPL cricket. Justin Langer. Get him in the team this game, please. Um, Rightio, so luck now, Super Giants, to win tonight. And we've got a special guest. He goes for the Chennai Super Kings. Here we go. Where's Paul? Paul Jefferson, are you there? Yes. My yeah. little, yeah. I've got my little sticks there. 
<laughs> Look at him. He's got the drum kit behind him. Before we get on there and ask a few questions, can you just get around there and just uh, let rip on the drums, please, mate? Yeah, just give yeah, us a little bit of tune. Change up the momentum here. Everyone spent 10 minutes listening to me. Here we go. Well, just everyone on the drum. <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant! Thanks very much for that, Paul. Thank okay, you go. You go for the uh, Chennai Super Kings. You're over there yeah. in Chennai. Yeah, yeah yep. I'm from Chennai. Right, yeah. And uh, you played for a band uh, in your younger days. Yeah, yeah, long back. Yeah, long back. I mean, right. And what what type of music did you like? R hard rock or uh, basically rock and funk. Rock and funk, awesome. funk, yeah. funk music. Okay, who's yeah. your favorite band? Uh, Benny Graham is my favorite drummer. Benny Graham. Yeah, yeah, Benny Graham. Radio Benny Graham. Right. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to have to talk to you about a few lessons after this uh, after this show. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So, um, okay, Chennai Super Kings. Um, they're in a bit of trouble at the moment. They play Mumbai on Sunday. Do you think they can get over the line there? Yeah, there's always a clash between Chennai and Mumbai, but I think this time. Chennai could come in the positive side, yeah. I think they will cross the line. It could be a They'll close game. Maybe the first super over for the season. Who knows? You could expect that. <laughs> it'll be it'll be good if it's the first super over of the season. I think you need Patty Rana in there instead of um, uh, Rahman uh, because I think you need that quality de death bowler. And Desh Day, I reckon he's going to be your key with the uh with the new ball this year i think he's better option than chaha chaha yes gets the ball to move but uh desh Pandey with his extra pace up there i'm liking what he's got to offer at the moment so um yeah what do you think so i i reckon mumbai are going to beat chennai if patty yeah. rana doesn't play yeah uh i'm, I'm still worried about daryl mitchell on the side maybe bring in moin ali or mitchell santner the place of daryl mitchell mitchell santner yeah. has been there for a long time but when he already got like Moin Ali, Jadeja, and Rachindra on the side, I don't think so. Sandler gets a chance, or at least yeah. bring in Moin Ali instead of Darren Mitchell. Rightio, uh, Mumbai. I'd I'd prefer to go with Mitchell in Mumbai, uh, simply because it's short boundaries, small boundaries, good wicket, um, and he's a he's any anything missed time from him is more likely to go over the fence than Moin Ali. I think Mo and Ali going back playing on Chennai and those slower grounds around the country. I think uh, I, I, I think uh, he probably should come in instead of um, Mitchell uh, because he offers that right arm off spin as well. Totally agree. Now, right, what questions have you got for me? Because you're a teacher of music at the moment. You get asked a lot of questions. Now it's time for you to ask a few questions to the student here. <laughs> yes, I think. <thank> <laughs> So I just want to ask, like, what inspired you to take spin bowling? Because you all know, like, Aussies, like, people from Australia, bowl pace. You all know for fast bowling. But what inspired you to take spin bowling? And who's the one batsman that you fear the most to bowl in your career? <laughs> right. Well, that, that's a good question. What inspired me to bowl spin bowling? Um, well, I, I came up from the country um, here in Australia to Perth. And um, they, uh, the club team that I played with picked me as an opening swing bowler that could bat in the middle order. <clears throat> then as I went through the grades, I became an opening batter. And then um, my first Shield game, I was batting number six for Western Australia. I'm in the nets bowling medium pace to uh, Mitchell Marsh and Sean Marsh's father, uh, Jeff Marsh, who was our captain. Old him a bouncer. And uh, Tony Mann came up to me, who was a, a leg spinner from West Australia, played against India, made 100 against India as a night watchman, so a, a legend of the game, and said, Brad, we've got a left-arm Chinaman that we're playing against tomorrow from New South Wales. Can you bowl some left-arm Chinamans in the nets? I'd never bowled them before, never even seen a left-arm Chinaman in my life, mm -hmm. and uh, bowled some in the nets and... Um, uh, Tony said you should stick with this 
add another string to your bow. Those medium paces aren't going to do any good at um, at shield level. And um, that really inspired me to become or, or bowl spin because I was a person who wanted to be able to do an, uh, or be an all-rounder in any team. Mm. And um, that, that's what inspired me to bowl spin. The uh, there, There's three batsmen that I found very difficult to bowl to. Um, Verinda Sowag, in any format, wanted to take you on. He didn't have respect for spinners. Uh, and um, I remember playing in an Adelaide Test match here in 2007. And uh, I went up to Adam Gilchrist behind the stumps. I said, Gilly, I've bowled two overs to Verinda Sowag. It's probably the best two overs I've ever bowled in international cricket. And I'm going at about 20 and over. <laughs> so he, uh, he just dominated me in that, in that phase. Um, Glenn Maxwell, who's having a tough time of it now, uh, when it comes to T20 cricket, uh, he was very difficult to bowl to because he plays a reverse sweep, also the conventional sweep. But he also worked out very quickly uh, with, with me uh, how I start, um, start my spells and he would really attack my first ball. Um, so I, I really enjoyed that about Glenn Maxwell. And then I'll go to Kevin Peterson. Um, Kevin Peterson was a player that was a tall batsman. So he'd be able to reach out and sweep you conventionally and also sweep you uh, non-conventionally. Then you feel as though you've got to be a foot shorter. And then he would be able to crouch and act as a small batsman but still have that power to hit you over the fence. So um, he, the margin for error for those three batsmen were, were very small um, in the formats that they played. So um, they're, they're, the, they're the three batsmen that I'd probably say were the most difficult to bowl to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's the next question? Yeah, okay. So, so uh, watching out the T20 games these days, like the duo making a major role. So do you think like... Uh, the matches where T20 games are played, the pitches of the stadium should be prepared in such a way that it won't be affected by due. Uh, because when we saw it in the 2021 T20 World Cup uh, that happened in UAE, I think out of 44, the 29 matches, as soon as you win the toss, you bat first, then you chase the teams who are winning it more conveniently. And even in this IPL, you see the due is becoming a major role these days. I could understand in test matches where the game has to be played for five days, uh, the ground is very different in the first day, second day, three, four, five. But in a T20 game, it's just 40 overs. How could a pitch change that much drastically quick for the side batting first and for the side batting second? And especially for a tournament like a World Cup, the semi-final or a final, if everything is decided by the flip of a coin, the toss, uh, would there be anything that could be done for the due? Yeah, I think um, I think there's a couple of things that, that that might be able to be done. Either start the game a little bit earlier, but then TV will um, be upset with yeah, that okay. because it's prime time where the TV is. The only other option that I can see to try and even it out as much as prop- possible is to play the uh, the T20 game when you know that the the dew is going to be a huge factor. Try and play it in quarters. So 10 overs, 10 overs, 10 overs, 10 overs. I know that sounds extreme, but then you can um, you can have a you can have a period where you have four overs of a power play in the first 10 overs, and then it allows a team to bowl spin for the next six overs um, to make use of the dry conditions. And then we come into the uh, back end of the game where you have two quarters out the back. You have another two hour, uh, two over power play in that back ten, o- uh, back ten overs. But then your impact player, then um, you're able to utilise it a-, a little bit more strategically with with the conditions of the dew. So you either kick a spinner out and bring in a medium pacer, or you back your spinner um, to to bowl a few overs. And, and go with the batter out the back end uh, because if you've lost early wickets going hard in the first 10 overs. That's probably the only solution that I could come up with um, with Jew. And with the time uh, that they've... The, the time restrictions this year too, the team that are bowling second, uh, it's going to be very difficult for them to bowl those overs in the time required. Mm-hmm. Um, I still remember a game out Kolkata I wasn't playing for Kolkata. I was playing for Rajasthan Royals at this stage. 
and the dew really took effect. And mm. I was bowling to Jacques Callis, and um, I, I had the short sleeves on. I didn't have a um, sweatband or anything, and the ball just slipped off my fingers because of the dew, mm. and uh, I couldn't control it. So you're sitting there with a rag, a rag, and um, and it just takes so much time to get that ball right so mm. that you can grip it and uh, get it on the surface. If you've got a dry ball when it's dewy on those uh, on those surfaces, it's quite good for spin because it gets a little tacky and you can get a little bit more turn. But um, for me, I, I think if we can – if if you think about putting it into uh, playing quarters, that might be able to negate some of the advantage that you have with dew at the back end. Yeah. That's a very good observation, Paul. Very good observation. Well, with with that question, what sort of solution would you have there as well? Uh, I think in football stadiums, they do something for the dew. If I'm not yeah. wrong, would that be, would that technology be, can be implemented in the cricket stadiums? Because already we have the rain factors affecting our games and in a special knockout or an ICC tournament, if a game is decided by rain, then dew also becomes one more factor. So if all these yeah. additional factors could be figured out, then the game could be an even contest for both the sides batting first and batting second. Yeah, yeah. Exactly right. We, we've we've got a um, stadium, talking about stadiums and football, uh, we've got a stadium here in Australia with the roof on it. Um, but sometimes when the roof's on there, you, it, it doesn't stop the dew. Uh, and that, that's that's the problem as well. And you've got to be careful with any chemicals that you use too to try and stop that dew as well because you've got to look out player welfare um, and and other people that are working on the grounds. Is that is that chemical safe? Uh for longevity of the body, yeah, that's a that's a really really good question, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's your, what's your next question? Uh, uh, I was just thinking why power ratings in a T20 game are not promoted a little bit higher the order. Um, we have to wait them for five, six, seven for them to come. Is it definitely a role for the middle order batsmen to come and solidify the innings, especially when the spinners are bowling in between? We say CSK doing that very good, sending in Dubey earlier to attack the spinners. And even when, I think in the yesterday's match when DK was sent earlier, he got to face like 22 balls like that and he was able to score more. Um, mm. On Gujarat Titans match, you saw uh, Vijay Shankar and Kane Williamson taking a lot of balls and then it creates a lot of pressure for the power raters to come down the track. So do you think like power raters should be promoted up the order, especially in the power play when there are only six or two fillers outside the circle? Should they be given more freedom for them? To go up the order and play rather than wait them to come in the six or seven lower down the order yeah i um i totally agree with you there i think um with kolkata knight riders game against chennai super kings the other night um uh, they had a they, they had one of the batsmen come out they had two riders out, out um out in the middle but they had rinku singh and um andre russell still in the sheds yeah, yeah. So, um there was a right arm off spinner, two left arm off spin options. If you took Rinko Singh out there and allowed him to be aggressive in that in those middle overs, all of a sudden Chennai would have had a bowl tech Shana, I think it was, uh, earlier on rather than get an over out of Ravindra. Um, mm -hmm. Worried about that ball spinning in and, and Rinko Singh taking, taking on the game. And when you've got two power hitters like that you and you're behind the eight ball or you're behind the run rate, it's worth sending one of them in in that particular situation. Um, it might have even been worth sending Andre Russell in in that particular um, phase as well because he's got a long reach and if he gets a couple away off the stumps and the spinners want to go wide, then that long reach, like Dubai, uh, he, he can muscle it over the fence. So mm. um, they, could, they could have gone either way there. I totally agree with you. I think sometimes... Um, playing with Kolkata Knight Riders, we left Andre Russell way too late. Um, uh, it's, it's very difficult for a player to consistently come out with five overs to go and tee off from ball one and make, uh, be successful every day. I think you've, you've got to give them at least an over where they can get themselves in, the feel of the game, and then they've got five overs after spending that time in the middle to really power the innings home. Um, that's very good observation. And I think you go to the Gujarat Titans. I think that's um, 
that's a good thing that they did last game, even though it didn't come off. Matthew Wade coming in instead of Kane Williamson. Um, Kane Williamson hasn't got a very good strike rate in uh, IPL. And if you look at all the power play um, history, uh, he's got one of the worst records in power play finding boundaries. I think he's in the bottom three. And that's 200 runs or more. So you need someone to take advantage of the power play and those middle overs. And I think um, they, they've done the right thing in trying to give Matthew Way to go there because he's uh, probably more aggressive than Kane Williamson. Great observation, mate. Great observation. Yeah. Thank you. you. You're on the you're, you're on the right note there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the middle order batsmen kind of taking a lot of time. That put kind of yeah. puts a more pressure for the coming batsmen. And so the, yeah. he was just thinking if they could be promoted higher the order. Oh, exactly right. And I think um, the other thing is with the power play, um, I mean, the impact player now, uh, if it if you go in with five bowling, five bowling options um, with the bat, then all of a sudden if one of your batsmen don't come off and you've got to get that other impact player as a batsman where well, you can swap the impact player for another batsman so you don't lose those five bowling options. But um, so... But if you're, uh, your top order take the game away and you don't need those bottom players, all of a sudden you have an impact player of another bowler where you, you, you're you utilising the advantages of the conditions. So, um, And it's the same when you're, when you're bowling as well. Um, you know, if, you, if you're bowling for it first, you want to give yourself six bowling options, knowing that you can replace one with a batter. Um, okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty hard with the matchups, yeah. 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 What about what? Yeah. Uh, yep. You got another one? Yeah. I got just one more question. Uh, should India go to this World Cup with a different approach, taking a younger team? Uh, with all due respect to Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli on there, but uh, I think we have tested a lot right from 2015 with those top order like Rohit, Virat, Kale, Rahul coming. So should we take mm -hmm. like more relatively inexperienced, with fresh mind, just go there? Next blow. Either win or lose, try your best to give it like Samson and Rinko Singh, Shivan Dubey, Brian Parag. And even India's bowling is slightly more dependent on Bumrah these days. So if at all Bumrah is injured, Bumrah or Shami is injured during the World Cup time, then I think our same bowling is also a little bit of threat if you if you don't have enough backup fast bowlers in the mix. Yeah. I was just thinking because in 2007, we had a relatively younger side with MSD taking the captaincy. And no one gave India a chance, but we still went to go on to win it. Is it because of the senior players that we expect more from them that we are losing it all the time again and again? Yeah, yeah. I think I think with the bowling department, I think you might need to take um, plenty of spin options over to America and USA. If it, it seems as though um, the wickets are turning a little bit more over there. So that's that's one aspect. I think you definitely need Boomer and Shammy in your lineup, but you need some youngsters around that. There's one one bloke that I was very surprised that didn't play last night. That's Dale. I've, I've been very impressed with him. Um, the left arm option um, with the new ball, you, you need that that left arm option who can swing it into the right hander, but also take the ball away to get those early wickets. Um, so that that that's someone I'm keen to look at. Uh, moving out the back end of this tournament as well. But when you talk about the batsmen, uh, the batting lineup is is the one where you really have to make big decisions and tough decisions because the T20 game is changing. Um, we're seeing the scores go up. We're seeing that uh, teams have been more attacking in those power playovers. And I think Virat Kohli, um, Rohit Sharma uh, and, and KL Rahul uh, I really love them, and I don't. I don't want them out of the team. But I think you can only afford probably to have one of them in your in your eleven now, moving forward with with where T Twenty cricket is now. Um, and that's that's not res disrespecting um, either of them. This is coming from a, a perspective of how I'd think as a as a selector. Um, so I'd be asking both of them, um, or all three of them. If you're intending to play in the World Cup, we're looking for more aggression, higher strike rates. Uh, and if you can do that, if you can deliver that in this year's IPL, well, you're definitely going to be in the team. So it, it all comes to their strike rate, whether they 
uh, whether they get picked or not. Um, and I think Sanju Sampson is one player uh, that can't get left out. He's got to be he's got to be the keeper, and he's probably got to take Rahul's spot uh, in in that scenario. Yeah, and Kishan, the way he batted last night, actually um, puts it puts. Uh, <laughs> Puts another spanner in the works, if you could say. Um, <laughs> where, which one of those two do you go for? Um, I, th- I think both can play. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'd keep with Sampson and uh, feel uh, have Kishan fielding. I think Kishan uh, probably is a better yes. fielder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I just want yeah. India to win this time at least because there'll be a lot of disappointments yeah. for the past. Few years in the World Cup tournaments. <laughs> Hope India wins. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Yeah, exactly right. And I'm looking at uh, Dubai and Parag as well that you um, yeah had in the list there of the of the questions. I'm really enjoying uh, Dubai. Um, the reason why I might think that he's got a uh, he's got a chance of playing for India in a World Cup is the way that he is starting to play fast bowling. That was that was a bit of a weakness. <laughs> Um, but there's been some extremely fast bowling at him, and he's taking on the pull shot and delivering. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's one to look for. Parag, I'm, I'm really in, loved watching the development of him. Um, uh, he's only young. I thought last year and the previous years before, he was just all wrapped up in the hype of the IPL. Um, he, he looks like he's a really nice, nice kid, uh, and he looks as though he's really calmed down this year. I thought, right. I'm a cricketer. Um, this is just not uh, all fanfare anymore. I've got to make the most of it, and I think he's. Um, I think I think he he's, he looks as though he comes from a humble background, but I think he's uh, he he's realised who he is this year, what his role is, and and where he wants to go. And I I just see growth in the player and growth in the person there, and uh, I, I'm really enjoying Parag with the way that he's going about it, and I love the way that he feels as well. So yeah, oh, that, that's probably one thing with uh, Dubai yeah. mm-hmm. fielding. He's he's got to be out in the field if he's uh, and show what he's got there. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I'll just uh, um, Ashaman Bara Barik here. What should be the mindset of a head coach when the team is losing? Now I'm going to throw this one at you, Paul. Okay. Um, <laughs> You, you're teaching music now, and when a student uh, is learning the drums, they have a bit of success, they go in that wave, and then all of a sudden they drop off and they feel as though they're not uh, not going forward anymore. Uh, what would be the mindset as a teacher? Um, what, what would your mindset be to a student like that? Yeah, we have to be with them. I think we have to motivate them enough with new styles which they haven't tried. Maybe yep. take something different, take a new song or something which they haven't tried earlier, then come back to yep. the things that they are struggling. That might help them. Uh, but I think it's all motivation and what you want to learn as a drummer that might help them to get stay back on track and keep the process going. Mm-hmm. But we have to be with them, ask them to like do things slowly, start it slow, then gradually, eventually increase the speed, definitely get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that's very similar to what you'd be doing as a head coach in a losing team. I think uh, for me, if uh, the be- the best coaches that I've come around don't necessarily go in there and take you to the nets and make you work harder in the nets, uh, they'll sit down and talk to you about what's going on with uh, life outside of cricket, um, what what's going in with your thoughts. Before the game starts, are you doing anything different than what you do when you uh, are having success? Um, what what pressures are you feeling out in the middle? That you uh, is is are there any coping me- mechanisms that you could change out in the middle when you're under pressure? Um, and I'd I'd try and be doing some um, uh, team harmony type exercises around the hotel. Uh, just set up a few competitions where you're you're bringing the group together uh, to try and to try and get them to laugh and and 
feel part of a unit and, and to try and create a culture where they actually feel special. Because when you're in an IPL tournament, it's not like a national team. An IPL tournament, you're there for two months, you're in and out, and if you don't get that momentum early and uh, you don't get on top of the personalities early, um, personality crashes and you don't clashes and you don't get that team harmony it's very hard to turn it around but as a as a losing coach right now i'd be looking to my leaders um and i'd be looking to a little bit of youth as well uh who's who's got a little bit of excitement and uh, a little bit of talent and just sort of just just make a few decisions with with youngsters and just say right this is your opportunity go out there do what you've got. Show us what you got. Don't worry about the result, and um, and just just play to your best. So that there's a few things there that, uh, that that I'd be looking at. But if I'm looking at RCB losing team, uh, you've got to win at least seven of the next eight games that you're playing um, because it's a top four in a in a um, ten team competition if you get seven you might be there but you've got to you've um i mean six wins you might be there but you've got to get seven to make sure it's um uh certain uh yeah i i, I just don't know if i could turn that rcb team around i don't think a head, any head coach can turn that rcb team around uh at the present moment because there's uh too much going on in the middle order where uh, they, they, there's no confidence and out the back end with their with their bowling uh they don't they don't have too many options with with wicket takers. So, um, and and the captain said that the other day in a press conference, and I wouldn't like to hear that as as a player uh, in the team. So um, there's a, there's a few things there for RCB that they've got to turn around. But it's it's within that. It's about mind mind coaching. It's it's more about um, getting players in sync with their head, making sure that's switched on rather than the talent. Because at the end of the day. Every player that's picked in the IPL knows how to do it, knows what to do. Um, it's just a matter of making sure you've got a clear mind when you've got to execute your skill. Good question, that. Good question. Um, okay. Uh, Paul, have you got another question before I go on the list here? No, sir. No. no. I think no, I got no, it. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what can DC, DC do to solve their batting issues? This is Anapam Dev Barman. Uh, what do you think they can do, Paul? I think they've tried pretty much much, <laughs> whatever they can yeah, do. Yeah. Uh, but it would happen if they stick to a couple of players for the rest of the game and give them a longer run instead of changing the order. Uh, I think they already changed the top order with Pratyush Shaw not getting a couple of matches in the beginning, then they brought him in. Uh, I think that's what they are struggling. Get a standard top four to five, allow them to play a couple of games. Make sure yep. they keep going because for them, I think the tournament is almost gone. Uh, they have to do something really magic to come out of it. So rather than too much changing, just take a bunch of players and go for it. Exactly right. I, I think the big one there is Mitchell Marsh, his hamstring injury, that power hitting, but also being able to bowl uh, is going to be costly. He's been a little bit unlucky um, at the start of the tournament, but pretty sure starting to make runs out the top. And if Mitchell Marsh can get back into that middle order, uh, then it, it, it lengthens their batting lineup. But without Mitchell Marsh there and no other prominent all-rounders uh, that bowl medium pace, I think uh, I think they're going to struggle. So, um, yeah, I, I just don't think they have that depth there of power hitters. That's a that's a good question there, Anna Palm. Um, right. Should RCB have played Will Jakes for Maxwell instead of Green? I've answered this early on in the uh, podcast. Oh, Paul, what, what do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think Maxwell scored only 32 runs this, this innings. I mean, this year so far, I think, out of the five games. Uh, Green was with Mumbai last year, and yesterday they played in 1KD. But to our surprise, they left Green and they played Maxwell. That's quite <laughs> believable why they did that. <laughs> At least for the tractor, they should have had green in this side. <laughs> sort of like so. Mate, well, you, you, you've just you've ad, you've added another uh, another reason why they should have played green um, on top of what I said earlier. So that that that's a really uh, really insightful uh, answer. That and it's a it's a perfect answer. You've got someone that 
uh, you've paid big bucks, bucks for in a trade. Uh, he's doing slightly better than Glenn Maxwell. Uh, he delivered for the Mumbai Indians out one KD Stadium, and you needed that uh, you needed that pace bowler rather than the uh, the spin bowler, especially knowing that there's going to be due at the back end. So I just think the decisions of RCB um, were completely wrong. And just looking at the dugout uh, at some stages, there just looks like there's just a bit of panic there as well, which is which is a bit of a worry. Uh, all right, let's go to Gushan Singh Sanger. Uh, hope I got that wrong. Right, uh, right. Did I get that right, Paul? Gushan Singh Sanger. I, I couldn't see the name still. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. I oh, will get that up. Uh, SRH is an overpowered team, but uh, their number three, four um, fail to deliver consistently. Should they give some more chances to the Indian players rather than depending on Markram and others? Gushan, um, I think there's enough uh, enough chances to the young Indian uh, players that are in that lineup, and I think they're really going to benefit from having Markram and uh, Klaasan around them. Uh, I, th- I think those two players are very vital to the lineup. Mark room there, if you lose early wickets, he can stabilise the innings, but he can also uh, amp up the strike rate as well. And I've, I've really enjoyed what I've seen with Mark room this year. He's been had the ability to take a few risks in the power play when SRH are uh, un, uh, in trouble and find those boundaries. Um, I, I just like um, the way that uh, Young Sharma are at the top of the order. Uh, really taking the game on with with Travis Head. I, I, I like it how they got a balance of young Indian batsmen around experienced overseas batsmen. If I if I'm looking at the overseas batsmen, the one that I'd be worried about with consistency would be Travis Head out the top of the order. Uh, I just think he's trying to overhit the ball at the present moment, um, and he just needs to uh, get a little bit more timing rather than try and uh, overhit the ball and. Um, that, that's where I sit. That's where I sit with SRH. I, I think they, um, I think they, they're really built well balanced in that middle order. Just talking about that too, Travis Head. I just want to talk about Jaswell. That um, uh, he's just come to mind as well. He's just come off a test series. He hasn't had a great start in this year. This year's IPL, uh, young Jaswell. But I think to uh, a bit like what I've said about Tra- Travis Head, he's trying to overhit the ball. He's not getting into good balance. When he's when he's in full flow in the IPL, he's using his timing. He's not trying to hit the big sixes. He's trying to hit those falls through the um, th- through the infield. When he does that, gets his timing, gets his balance, then all of a sudden he finds those sixes as well. So I think Jaswell's just got to change his approach as well. I... I um, uh, as we go into the back end of the season, but with all with all that, um, Paul, with SRH, with the answer there, uh, would you agree with me, or would you try and bring in another Indian youngster? Mm, I definitely agree with you. You can't leave Markram. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that is yeah. batting. He he's a gun fielder. He takes all the tough catches. So his batting and the fielding are the best. So you can't uh, drop Markram. Uh, but those three top, uh, or maybe Mayank Agarwal and Rahul Tripathi and Abhishek Sharma, at least, I think they should be happy at least. Abhishek Sharma is firing up, up at the top. Imagine if he's also not having a good time, then it will put a lot of pressure to add maybe one more foreigner like Glenn Phillips in the middle. But I think it, yeah. that's a positive aspect for them that at least Abhishek is firing. So I'll settle with this lineup. And Pat Cummins looks so happy with this. Even in that last match, he was smiling. <laughs> the yeah, last yeah, ball when yeah. the ball was going. I think the lineup is sorted. Um, earlier, there were a lot of talks with which four foreigners they should need to go. Like they got a lot of options. I think finally they got it sorted. So just continue with that. Mm, yeah, no, exactly right. Uh, I'm just looking at uh, one more question before we can go. And uh, we'll go to Gushan again. Um, well, hang on. Uh, Ashman Barak. I'll go to here. Do you think Lizard Williams is a better option than Norkey or Richardson? Um, no, I don't, Ashaman. 
I, I just think Norky's coming back from injury. If Delhi Capitals are going to succeed, they really need him to fire. He's their best option in the death overs. Uh, he's the go-to man to get wickets. At the present moment, I feel as though he's falling over rather than staying tall out the bowling crease. That's where he's losing his accuracy with the uh, with the potent Yorker and also losing a bit of pace just because he's falling over. If he can get that right, then Delhi Capitals have a chance of turning it around. Um, I like Jai Richardson. You'd use him with a new ball, but it's very difficult to use Jai Richardson over here in the IPL in the death overs because he's small and skiddy. And Lizard Williams, um, uh, I'd only give him an option when Delhi Capitals are fully out of the tournament. Um, I just think you've got to get a, you've got to get your best bowler in there, the, the guy that's done most of the job uh, over the last couple of years, and that's Norky. What about you, Paul? Yeah, I'll stick with him. I think it'll be too tough call now to bring in Lizard Williams into the side, yeah. considering he's not played much here in India. So, yeah, stick with Norky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Ayosh Shekhar, uh, will Delhi Capitals win today? I'd like it for my mate. Um, I'd like it for my mate, Ricky Ponting. Um, but I just don't think they have strong enough batting like Lucknow Super Giants. But thanks very much. Oh, hang on. There's a KKR question down the bottom. Uh, you, picked, you picked Venky Iyer as the leading run scorer while having Hog out with me. Do you think uh, KKR are underutilising him? Uh, Nitish Rana is back in the squad. He's come back from injury. Uh, I did pick Venki uh, Venki Iyer to um, uh, be the leading run scorer. I think he's on his last legs. Um, they've got the young 19-year-old that has uh, delivered in the uh, last couple of games. And with Nitish Rana coming back, I think Venki Iyer could be the player to miss out. And sometimes you make those uh, those calls, Anna Pum, and um, uh, you get it wrong. So, you know, you win some and you lose some. But uh, Venkatesh Iyer, I think he's uh, he's probably going to struggle to stay in that KKR lineup. What do you think, Paul? Uh, I think it, he was more valuable when he was bowling earlier, but I don't think so. KKR need his bowling nowadays. So they're all dependent yep. on his batting. So if you look only in the batting aspect, I think they could try Nitish Rana a couple of games and see how he fits in. Yep, yep. And uh, Anna Schumann, Anna Schumann uh, Jake Fraser, McGurk, in place of Richardson or Norky. Uh, if they're going to play him, I'd, I'd bring him in instead of Richardson tonight and just add that little bit of power in the batting lineup, taking a risk with uh, lacking in your bowling depth. That's probably the only way that you might beat luck now tonight. But anyway, Paul, thank you very much thank you. for uh, having us tonight and or uh, being on the show. Is there a little bit of a um, uh, favourite favorite little piece that you want to uh, give us a 10-second little spiel with to yes. lead us out of this hog out, if that's sure, all right? Sure. And Sorry. if you, if yep, while you're getting ready, if anyone wants to be a special guest like Paul Jefferson today, just make sure uh, you get online and fill out the form um, that we've got here. It's a Google form, and you can come on and live and have a chat with me during this IPL. All right, take us away, Paul, as lead us out. Thanks very much, everyone, for joining us, and thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks very much, Paul. And thanks very much, everyone, for joining me on Hog Out Live.